Kasi was a world town with its castle. The nearly 9,000 inhabitants, including those living outside the world town, were mostly Basque. They worked as milkmen, bakers, farmers, blacksmiths, coal merchants, ranchers, traders, and so on. It seems to have been a prosperous village and relatively well governed. To know what happened, we must go back to the 31st August, 1813. In 1794, French troops entered Saint Sebastian. They claimed that their enemy was not the people, the people, but the Spanish absolute monarchy, and began conversation with the General Assembly of Gipuzkoa. In those negotiations, they agreed to maintain the territorial laws to regain the independence, punish hardly the outrages of the militaries. Nevertheless, those agreements were not fulfilled at all. Besides, the ones taking part in the General Assembly of Gipuzkoa had been harshly punished on churches of betraying the Spanish monarchy. Almost simultaneously, in 1795, the French Republican authorities and the Spanish royalists signed the Peace Treaty of Basel, by which Gipuzkoa stayed under Spanish rule and in return a Spain city to France, the island of Santo Domingo. Put Francia frontiers when they want. Indeed, the Constitution of Bayonne of 1807 and the 1812 Constitution of Cadiz crushed the Basque nationalist claims not achieving the independence and with the abolition of the territorial laws. At the time, the main hegemonic powers, and as always, with imperialistic desires, were France and England. France and the Napoleon troops occupied part of the Spanish Kingdom. The English and Portuguese troops were a Spanish army allies. The main resources that made them allies were different one another, but they never wanted to increase the welfare of the people. In some battles, like the Bailen one, the Spanish soldiers defeated the French. In some other cases, were the Allied troops which drove back Napoleon's troops, as in the case of Ciudad Rodrigo in, in, in Badajoz, where the citizens, citizens were slaughtered as well as after they were those from Saint Sebastian. <coughs> The Allied troops, before arriving, arriving to Saint Sebastian, fought in Victoria against the French, causing thousands of deaths. In this case, Victoria was upset, and that perhaps led some to think that neither would be Saint Sebastian. But many of those with family or friends in nearby towns of Saint Sebastian fled at the approach of British troops and Portuguese. The capture of Saint Sebastian had not been easy for the Allies, as the French troops have caused hundreds of casualties. But eventually they came through the Brecha the 31st August. The French took refuge on Mount Urgul and then began looting and slaughter of civilians in Saint Sebastian. The Allies went house to house. They raped, robbed, looted, murdered, ravaged, and burned the village. The only street saved from the fire was the Trinidad Street, which henceforth would be called 31st August. The death roll recorded by the city council at the time was 1,600. Taking into account that many of the 5,000 residents living within, within the walls had fled before the tragic incident, it can be said that most of the inhabitants were murdered. This massacre of civilians was not a simple fortuitous fact or the result of the heat of battle, but something premeditated and planned. It had been a punishment or revenge 
as we like to call it. The main responsibles were the Duke of Wellington, commander, commander of the British troops, and the Spanish generals Alava and Castaños. Ending here this brief account of what happened that uh, 31st August 1813, would leave it incomplete. The people who had fled and those who survived were gathering in the village of Subieta and they decided to rebuild Saint Sebastian. That's all.